imagine being locked in an attic closet for decades, tortured, hungry, your love and life lost, all the while the world outside your window passes by, never hearing your cries, never sensing or knowing your agony. Welcome to the torture closet and the sad tale of Blanche Monnier on this episode of The Soul Cut. In one of the saddest and most awful tales I have come across in a while, we were going to talk about Blanche Monnier and her experience of being locked away for over two decades. An article written by Bethany Wade states, There are stories left and right of young women being locked up and kidnapped by men for their own torturous needs. But what if your kidnapper was your mother? Your brother? Aristocrat Blanche Monnier's story may be over a century old, but that doesn't make it any less terrifying. Finally discovered when she was 50 years old, Monnier was only 55 pounds, laying in a hay bed covered in feces, urine, bugs, and food scraps. While calm during the rescue, it was clear that Monnier suffered mental damage from the capture. What led her mother to lock her in such horrid conditions, people have asked? Love. Love, in the end, is always at root, is it not, of these strange and macabre stories? Bethany goes on to write, like every other French socialite in 1876, Monnier was desperate for love. At 25, she was still unmarried and was desperate enough to move on with her life and get on and out of her mother's home. She eventually found love in the form of an older lawyer. But her mother disapproved of the relationship. Still, Monnier's heart was set on marrying this man, regardless of what her mother or even her brother thought. And that, ladies and gentlemen, would end up being her great downfall. As a vicious argument ensued, Madame Monnier forbade Blanche from seeing this man and even went so far as to beg her and demand of her to call off the relationship. But Blanche, as young lovers will, stuck to her guns and refused to end it. From there, all we know is that Madame Monnier knew that she would never ever leave the man that she loved. And Mother Monnier knew that she would never give up her emotions on her own. So she took matters into her own hands and locked her daughter in a tiny attic room with barricaded shutters preventing any light, any light into the room. If Monnier wanted freedom, she would have to break off the marriage to this penniless lawyer her mother disapproved of. Now, was the lock in, locked away punishment meant to be for a day, an hour, a week, a month? We don't know. But whatever it was intended to be, it ended up being one of the most awful events that anyone could ever experience. You see, Blanche Monnier was in love. And even if that meant never seeing her lover again, then she would do what she had to do. She thought she would wait her mother out and stay in the room. But hours turned into days and days turned into weeks. And eventually she was chained to the bed, left only to eat the dinner scraps her mother would give her and sleeping on a bed of hay in this locked away attic closet. As Monnier laid captive in that tiny attic, she truly did never see her lover again as he passed away in 1885. But Monnier was just as important in high society as her mother and brother. How then, Bethany writes, did they get away with the sudden disappearance of this beautiful, strikingly beautiful young lady? The answer is they faked her death. In the public eye, Blanche Monnier was a dead woman who her mother and brother would mourn at every chance, taking the time to tell the story of how they lost their beautiful young daughter, sister. All the while, she's locked away, starving, tortured, chained, in darkness, never seeing light. Now, no one doubted her death, of course. This was a high society family. 
And as a young woman passing away unexpectedly, this was not any real reason for concern. These kind of things happened from time to time in the late 19th century. Her brother, who also appears to have been manipulated by the mother, lived well into his 50s in the home. He never left, he never married, and stayed in the home with the mother, not questioning the situation, or so we are led to believe. Finally, in 1901, French police, Bethany writes, received a note full of scribbles, claiming there was something strange occurring at the Monnier address. The note even claimed they could hear screams coming from a closed window. How eerie that must have been to walk down the street of a 19th century French alley and hear the moans and the screams of a woman captive for 25 years. The note even claimed they could hear the screams, and while police knew that Blanche Monnier was dead, or so they had been led to believe as everyone else, they still went to investigate to verify the claims and simply to make sure that they were false. But when they showed up to the house, Madame Monnier peeked her head out at the window and ignored the door. The mother would not open the door. Police eventually had to kick in the front door and immediately were hit with the smell coming from Blanche's room. It permeated the house. There they found the now 50-year-old Monnier looking like a skeleton, smelling of her own waste. 25 years of darkness, 25 years of waste, starving, bugs, torture. After taking Monnier to the hospital, Bethany continues to write in the article, she was grateful for the treatment of the nurses giving her a bath and a proper meal for the first time in 25 years. When interrogated by police, Madame Monnier claimed Blanche, her daughter, brought this all upon herself, being a woman with violent tendencies and mentally ill woman, therefore they had to treat her that way. Her brother also agreed that Blanche did this to herself, claiming she couldn't. She could have left at any time, but she decided not to, and yet chose not to escape. She wanted to be there, is what her brother claimed. When it came time to face the court, her mother was given a longer sentence than her brother. But as these things often happen, justice does not seem to prevail, for her mother died just 15 days into her sentence. She sentenced her daughter 25 years in the attic, in a lifetime of sorrow, she spent only 15 days paying for her crime. Well, the brother, you ask what happened to him? Well, he was a lawyer. And as a lawyer, he wormed his way out of his year-long sentence shortly after appealing the charges. Yet all the while, Blanche was robbed of her life. And considering that she was a 50-year-old woman with nowhere to go, she was admitted, in sad irony, into a psych hospital where she lived for the remainder of her life. No justice was ever truly given to Blanche Monnier in this life. She lost her love. She lost her life. She lost her mother, her brother. She lost her mind. Never able to fully adjust back to the social world. Never fully able to adjust back to speaking. And how would you respond after 25 years? in a dark attic with no lights, scraps of food, barely able to survive. The torture attic, the torture closet, the torture chamber. Sometimes we like to think that we go through rough times today, but there really is a difference between our world and the world of the past. In the world of the past, these kind of things were easier to hide, not so much today. I often think about this story of Blanche Monnier, of the darkness, of the sad tragedy, and what it must have been like, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, week after week, and month after month, year after year, decade upon decade, lost to the world, lost in the darkness of the torture closet. <laughs>